Hey, what's up guys? This is Alco183 with the 7th Dueling Network video. And it's up for no reason that the title says Epic Dueling Network Duel. You know what? It says Dueling Network Epic Duel, I believe. Whatever. Anyway, um, last duel I used a Mada deck, um, a Twilight, Lightsworn Twilight. And so I used a creative deck here. You all, most of you know that my main deck is Gravekeepers. Well, I in this deck I use a, it's a variant on Gravekeepers. This is Gravekeeper Burn, which focuses on Gravekeeper's Cannon Holder, Gravekeeper's Curse, and Gravekeeper's Recruiter in combination with Ultimate Offering to get loads of burn damage in on the opponent. And then I have cards like Monster Reborn and Call of the Haunted to bring either Recruiter or um, Curse back, or in some cases Cannon Holder, so I can inflict even more damage. That's the idea of the deck. My opponent here is Pato M. And I gotta say, this is a really awesome guy. He gave me a really awesome duel. In the first part of the duel, I. Well, here it's not really anyone having an advantage. In a while, I'll have the advantage. But afterwards, um, he'll definitely have the advantage, but there will be a certain spell card that saves my ass. And then it's going to get so friggin' close. I try to get back all of my monster for some final couple of bits of burn damage. He keeps negating my things with Fiendish Chain Effect Veiler. You'll all see of that. And also, um, this duel is a little bit, well, quicker in how everything goes compared to other duels because I spit this one up to 200% instead of 150%. Because the original duel was 25 minutes 47 seconds long. And I thought, you know what, I'm not going to bore, well, bore you. I'd say it's an exciting duel, but I wanted to go with um, a little bit shorter video. So it's almost 30 minutes. All right. Um, he's using a ninja deck, so ninja grandmaster Hanzo. Um, he has super ninjutsu art, no, ninjutsu art of super transformation or something. Um... Um, just a minute, guys. Alright. Um, sorry for that short interruption. Anyway. Um. Uh. I think I just missed what I did. I think I just had a couple of recruiters and cannon holder to inflict loads of damage. Yeah. And here he uses Ninja Sword of Super Transformation, which tributes one of his ninja monsters, his ninja Grandmaster Hanzo, I believe it's called, and one of my monsters, Cannon Holder, and then special summons from his deck, a ninja monster that is Dragon, Sea Serpent, or one other type that is has a level equal to or less than the total level of the tributed monster, so level 8. Um, yeah, here he's sort of taking over. Because I had the advantage with cannon holder and recruiter and all, now he's taking over, bringing out Kiko Ninja Blade Hato, as it's called in the Japanese anime. So I'm f at this moment I'm thinking I'm gonna lose this duel. I have to defend um, with curse, and he can now attack twice with this dragon due to Blade Armor Ninja's ability, so I'm forced to set my other curse and not inflict damage with it to save my ass. I could have also summoned it in attack mode to get him 500 damage in, but that would have cost me 1900 points, which I really didn't want. And here I get my savior, Messenger of Peace. With this card on the field, there's monsters with 1500 or more attack cannot attack. They cannot declare attack. His, Not his monsters, not mine either, but I almost don't have any mon. Only my Xyz monsters have more than 1500 attack, the rest all has less. The important thing is, he can't attack. And all I have to do to keep that card on the field is pay 100 life points during each of my standby phases, which really isn't a lot. If I don't want to pay them, or if I can't pay that, that price, I just send the card to the graveyard. Now he makes a weird move, Fiendish Chain on his own monster. But then I get why, because he, then he can use Magic Planter 
to send it to the grave and draw two cards, because that needs to be used on a face-up continuous trap. And he didn't want to get rid of his um, ninjutsu or super transformation, because that would get rid of his um, dragon ninja. Here I get the Legacy of Yatagarasu. It's a trap card that lets you draw one card. There's another trap that does that, namely Jar of Greed, a much more well-known card. But, um, Legacy of Yatagarasu um, can let you draw two cards instead of one in the rare cases that the opponent has a spirit monster on the field. Very few people use spirit monsters in their decks, but some people do, and if they do, and they somehow still have it on the field, um, well, if they have it on the field, you activate that card. You can draw two cards instead of one, which helps a little more. And here, and if you really want, you can still choose to go for one draw, but I usually go for two. Well, I will probably usually go for two, but but I haven't really encountered any spirit monsters yet. Yeah, I'd say this is a really little bit more helpful version of Jar of Raid. All right, here he comes up with Upstart Golden Ninja. That's the only monster of his that can attack, but he has only 500 attack, meaning here he gets 1500 damage, which is really helpful for me. And now, I can special summon Curse. I could have also summoned Cannon Holder, but I had two Cannon Holders in my deck and only one Curse, which made would make it more... Um, there's a higher chance that I would draw Cannon Holder than the chance I would get Curse. And I wanted both of them on my field. Alright. Shard of Greed has been on the field for two turns, so I get to draw two cards. Here I get Nightmare Steel Cage. So would I get rid of Messenger of Peace, of, or would he get rid of Messenger of Peace any anyway? Then I could place my Nightmare Steel Cage and keep him quiet for two more turns. Here I use Call of the Haunted to um, get Cannon Holder back, but then he has Effect Failure, which can only be activated during the opponent's main phase from your hand. You can discard it from your hand to the graveyard to negate the opponent's monster's effect until the end phase. And here I was a little confused. I thought he meant that Cannon Holder is destroyed or something. But apparently I sent Call of the Haunted, the card that summoned Cannon Holder, to the graveyard. And I m there was a slight misunderstanding, but we got out of it no, problem at no, no problems at all. I just accidentally sent Call of the Haunted to the graveyard when I shouldn't have. So, in a moment I'll pick it up from my graveyard and place it on the field again. No problema. Also, by the way, Pato M, he's from Argentina. He speaks Spanish. And since it was just an amazing duel and he's a really cool guy, um, I'm hereby going to give a shout out to his YouTube channel, which is Patricio Marino. That should be how you pronounce it. Patricio. Patricio Marino. You should be able to see an annotation right now with how you spell it. Would you be confused about that? Please go check out his videos. It pretty sure they're all in Spanish. I've checked out a couple of them. It's mostly dueling network videos and a couple of vlogs as well, which is what I'm doing at the moment, so I really like that. He doesn't have that many subscribers yet. I believe I was number 15, but I like the guy, so I'm going to support him. I've already subscribed, and... Uh, well, I'd, my Spanish isn't all that good, but I hope I can, uh, well, I can probably understand most of it, at least from the duels, and maybe he can teach me a little bit of Spanish. Not that I'm that interested in learning Spanish, I have a little, enough stuff that I want to study, and that I have to study for school as well, but I guess a couple of things in Spanish wouldn't help, because there's quite a lot of Spanish-speaking um, duelists on Dueling Network, so maybe he can help me with a few... Um, dueling terms in Spanish. So I can talk to those Spanish duelists better, I guess. Now here, um, an important monster on his part here is Black Lush Soldier, Envoy of the End. It can be special summoned um, from your hand by banishing one light and one dark monster in your grave. Once per turn, you can remove from play one monster in the field which he does every turn, because he can't attack anyway, so he, he will use that attack. The downside of that effect is that um, he can't attack with Envoy that turn, but he couldn't anyway because of Messenger of Peace. Right. I keep on paying the price for Messenger of Peace. I have three recruiters in my grave right now, two curses. What I'm really hoping for right now is to draw another curse. 
because if I draw another curse, I get another 500 damage. Or cannon holder, because that will inflict the final 700. Here, 500 damage from curse. Really exciting over here. 1400 for me, 200 for him. The slightest thing he can change it. One more curse, one more cannon holder, and it's all over. Here he gets rid of my curse, so I can't use it again, can't revive it again. And since none of my monsters um, that were summoned with Call of the Haunted were destroyed, my Call of the Haunted stay on the field. And here I draw an important card, Part of Avarice, which um, picks five monsters from your graveyard, puts them on top of the deck, shuffles the deck, and then you can draw two cards. But to play that, I needed space, so and the only card I would be able to get rid of, Messenger of Peace. I did that. I thought, you know, then he can attack again, but I have two more Nightmare Steel Cages, so I was fine. So I'm pretty sure I put back two Recruiters, um, two Curses, and then I put Zen Minus back in the extra deck. Here I get Cannon Holder. I'm like, yes, I win! Send G um, Spy to the Graveyard, and Effect Failure again! He negates my effect. So yeah, I can't do much except play Nightmare Steel Cage to survive for a little bit longer. Just hoping that he can't, but he has Envoy, so he's going to banish Cannon Holder again. It's just going to happen. And I believe it's this turn that he plays his spell, or was it... Yeah, it's this turn. He plays of Moon to flip him face down so he can place another face down. That's Fiendish Chin. A trap that targets a monster on the opponent's side of the field, um, negates that monster's effects, and makes that monster unable to attack. He will use that later in the duel. Apparently, um, what he told me after the duel, um, he apparently had that the turn before that. I, I didn't pay attention to that card, but he pretty sure he had it the turn before. What he, what he could have done, the turn before that, he could have actually won the duel, but he only realized that once he ended the turn. What he would would have been able to do, use Envoy's ability, get rid of Cannon Holder, the Moon to flip it face down, flip a can, um, Envoy back into attack mode, then, um, um, yeah, he flips Envoy back into attack mode, its effect was reset because it was flipped face down, then he would have been able to use his, um, use the effect again to get rid of my other cannon holder, and then... No, wait, Messenger... He had a way of getting rid of Messenger of Peace, I believe. No, wait, he didn't, but then he could direct attack with two of his ninjas with 500 attack for 1,000 damage, and then he could have won. But yeah, here's the end of the duel. Ultimate Offering was still in the field. I got a curse. He negated that with Fiendish Chain, but I was able to summon Cannon Holder for game. It was an amazing duel. Pato M, thank you. This was really, really awesome. Everyone, shout out again to Patricio Marino, his YouTube channel. Please go check him out. It, he's an amazing guy, and I love dueling with him. It was really the most, uh, the closest and most exciting match I've had in quite a while. <sighs> that was really a cool duel. Alright guys, if you have any deck suggestions, remember to post them in the comments below. I currently have two that I'm working on. Um, one suggestion is to use a deck based on cards that Yuma uses in the anime, and the other is a deck built around the effect of the Fabled Unicorn. I haven't u ever used the Fabled's before, so I'm gonna um, try a normal Fable deck first, and then more on fa um, based around Unicorn. But the Yuma deck has already been finished. I'm going to duel my friend who suggested that probably later today because he also has a Yuma base deck, but it's quite a different one. So I'm going to duel. It. I'm going to do Yuma versus Yuma for that. Right, guys. I'll see you in the next video. I love doing this duel. Bye bye.